I do it. But and grasso, and at the rate of five to seven tweets a day on anything and everything he does. This is a very interesting presentation from him. He was in PwC earlier, now he's on his own. Uh, blockchain is uh, proliferating in consumer sector, energy sector, financial institution, healthcare, industrial goods, insurance, public sector, and technology and media. For every sector, he has identified some of the areas where things are happening. Like in case of consumer, goods provenance is an important thing. In case of energy, P2P marketplace is an important thing. That means you can think of, there is a power, power grid in India today. Every day morning, you can buy power from the central grid. Tomorrow that can be put into digital uh, uh, blockchain technology. Tokenization of physical assets that comes under financial institution. Uh, insurance, the, so this, if I, am, I, I, I have to spend about half an hour if I want to spend about it. BCG, uh, Boston Consulting Group has helped to prepare this chart. So if you want to learn about applications of blockchain technology, I have given the source of this document, you can study this. This is a very interesting development. This is a very interesting effort on the part of IBM. IBM says, and I was talking to dragon chain in uh, with us that whether this can be done suppose uh, uh, there is a uh, exim blockchain there is a uh, microfinance blockchain there is a trade finance blockchain uh, there is a healthcare blockchain there is a kishan blockchain if every blockchain wants to do its own kyc it becomes huge duplication and huge consumption of electricity why not we do uh, like in India today, your PAN card is done by a national, a national depository. Similarly, why we cannot have a national KYC organization like IBM has already thought through. The only thing is that suppose you want to get into a healthcare blockchain, which I'm talking about. So what do you do? You do your KYC. With, with this particular blockchain developed by say IBM or today Infosys in, in India, this, this healthcare blockchain which is being operated, the healthcare blockchain of Infosys, sorry, the KYC blockchain of Infosys and the healthcare blockchain of say any national authority will have a tie up. So once I've done myself as, a, as, a, as, as my identity is established, I come, they pass on a hashtag to this blockchain. I come and I know this hashtag. I upload my medical documents and I'm already a participant. So if you do a centrally done interoperable blockchain for KYP, that can be used for anything and everything provided interoperability of blockchain is possible for which I was giving the example of interchain that the dragon chain is doing. I am aware of a company in India called uh, IBA, Indian Blockchain Association. This company, I know the owner of this company also, I've already had a meeting with them. This company has got contracts from Bangladesh and certain Far East countries for developing blockchain solutions for this, <laughs> for them. Now think of, in India, blockchain has not proliferated, but Indian blockchain experts and companies are giving blockchain services to outside countries. That is the beauty of Indian talent. This is a tracking and tracing blockchain application. Uh, this particular, uh, uh, and bell paper, which farmer has produced, where his farm is located, what fertilizer was used, all kinds of things you will be able to know when you are buying these items. Similarly, if you are taking a good wine today, sitting in India, and if this wine was produced somewhere in uh, Switzerland or in Austria, you will come to know which part of Austria these grapes were grown, which uh, winery has produced this, and who was the farmer for these grapes? So tracking and tracing solution. This is a unique blockchain for gift card. Uh, you receive a lot of uh, gifts 
from shopper stop from buying uh, uh, buying air air tickets as swiggy every anybody and everybody gives you gift point delicious for buying chicken so japanese solution come here that whatever you give to your customer come and sit into my blockchain and give this into one token i'll send i'll consolidate all your gifts so that the customer will not forget suppose i do not even know how much paytm gives me what kind of uh, uh, benefits and discounts Uh, so i forget and i don't use it that is the benefit paytm takes advantage of that for marketing their product but ultimately they don't spend up that money because i forget i don't use it within time so this blockchain technology will be able to help paytm uh, this is some i'm something like something like central bank digital currency uh, this is uh, one of the papers i have written on this uh, he, uh, this is an ex example as uh, bank de france and a swiss bank uh, uh, finna they are getting into getting together to develop a blockchain for cbdc this is a switzerland bank uh, an existing corporate financial laws uh, they are uh, they are doing switzerland passed a new set of amendments for six existing corporate and financial law to intend this regulatory framework and for cryptocurrency and for that they are using blockchain cryptocurrency and blockchain of course all of you know we pro R3 developed a blockchain for Thailand digital currency. Three stock exchange of the world: Gibraltar, London, and and uh, LSE, uh, Gibraltar, and one more country, Switzerland. They uh, they are uh, they have already done a trial run of running a stock exchange, like our Bombay Stock Exchange or a National Stock Exchange. A stock exchange will be run in future through blockchain technology. Uh, Russia, I was talking about, is developing a voting blockchain. Uh, Russian blockchain for voting. Uh, the beauty of this blockchain would be it will not be used for only voting. Suppose the uh, MLA or MP of your constituency tomorrow wants to raise a problem of the locality uh, in the assembly or parliament of the country. This man, this uh, this MP can announce that I am going to raise it. Please give me your views. so this blockchain technology can be used by the mp for gathering views and analyzing the data and to understand and appreciate what are the people's opinion about issues in my constituency so this will allow this uh, this mp to be in touch through digital media with his people this is something for uh, music uh, ibm blockchain for digital music value chain that is for tokenization etc implementation of blockchain and challenges and governance this is a very important point uh, uh, everything is done hunky dory with blockchain blockchain has its problems also first important problem is uh, there are very few technologically competent person to design a blockchain i have my practical experience of working with a couple of startups Uh, where they make too many mistakes in designing the blockchain and too many back and forth happens criminal connections uh, happens in blockchain this of course mostly available in uh, in cryptocurrency space so the exchange operators are are the sources of fraud etc but in in any other blockchain other than the uh, other than the uh, cryptocurrency if the kyc is done properly then criminal connection is not problem scalability uh, two things are important for scalability and one is internet speed and third is the machine speed with uh, i'm 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 imagining a situation 10 years down the line when blockchain will come up in a big way perhaps quantum computing will help blockchain but today Uh, again my experience of talking to couple of blockchain uh, based organizations that scalability is no longer an issue and also green blockchain is also not an issue because other than cryptocurrency the rest of the enterprise blockchain or private blockchains are operating with a, a constant basis suppose 
if in an exim contract one contract is to be accepted by only three parties there is no no, no need of 30% of the miners to give consent only three parties are consenting so blockchain is green green energy consumption that's what i was talking about privacy we have talked about security we have talked about fragmented regulation this is a major issue of blockchain uh, the world has to converge but we have a we have a benefit that indian laws are in convergence with the european laws because uk has ruled us very for long and more and more so far regulations are concerned those are converging in the world because uh, because one thing is accounting ifrs and us gap are almost converged today so accounting regulations banking regulations all are converging so i don't see 10 years down the line this should be an issue lack of adequate skill of course still that is why we are here today we are trying to develop skills on blockchain maybe slow and cumbersome i don't think it is cumbersome anymore people didn't understand earlier it is slow today because of the scalability issue when you use a blockchain please dev uh, develop solution please use the garage method and garage method is an unique combination of design thinking and i'll i'll give you some knowledge on design thinking which i have already given awh awh principle lean startup that is expense management oriented startup and devops i'm sure dr rai has talked to you about De devops and finally i talked about strategy that is agile methodology that also i have talked about uh, blockchain is one technology jisme jugar nahi chalta hai you cannot do this kind of a solutioning in blockchain technology it's not possible jugar nahi chalega you can't just do like this you can't just do like this blockchain technology has to be with collaboration blockchain technology has to be in compliance of law uh blockchain technology still struggling with uh, this particular compliance that is right to forget i am sure in course of time this will be also done selection of implementation partners that is if you want to do blockchain in your organization selecting your partner is a big thing because very few providers are available in india today cost imp or implementation initially i don't think a blockchain cost for implementation would be as expensive as uh, sap uh, uh, that your roi has to be very very low to start with sap i don't think so uh, moreover you need not have your own blockchain like six banks are having one blockchain for trade finance so you, you need not bothered about all these things too much kyc of course uh, i centralized kyc is possible carbon footprint can be reduced connectivity 5g is coming to india so hopefully uh, that will not be a problem so i personally feel blockchain is not going to be a problem in future and 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 rather since this kind of solutions are not possible blockchain will help you to establish the truth what are the principles of governance in blockchain uh, may i request you to read it uh, there is no point in reading all this just read and ask me question if you have any problem sorry if you have any question you can ask me because most of the principles of blockchain governance coming from the technology this is a very interesting point list authority to developers once the blockchain platform is rolled out the developers will have very least least possible things to say because smart contract already is existence except for the technological glitches uh, there should not be anything so far as the authority of the developers are concerned suppose ibm administered say uh, say logistics blockchain ibm should not have anything anything to say except seeing that the blockchain is performing technically correctly similarly censorship 
Suppose I am a participant. I have complied with the KYC, and KYC should not be one time. KYC could be annual or KYC could be biannual also. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, two yearly also. Once I have completed the censorship, I should be allowed to participate in any blockchain transactions. I should not be stopped. Uh, but uh, only one thing here. Suppose a Nirav Modi, uh, any business organization which is in a blockchain, his name is announced in the market, and 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 uh, for Nirav Modi type or Mohul Chokshi type, then of course the platform developer or the administrator will have a censorship permission. Again, the censors when you will be censored, you will not be allowed to participate in any blockchain. Uh, that will depend. That will again will be. Stated in the super smart contract that under these circumstances you will be allowed to operate. You will be you will be stopped. Your your blockchain admission, all your data will be frozen. Fungibility versus virtual currency. I don't think three years to the five years down the line it will be required because CBDC is coming. Central bank digital currency is is going to be a reality. i have written a paper please read my paper all 193 countries of the world are in some stages of working with cbdc china has already already tested for cbdc they are they are issuing four kinds of digital currencies for four different purposes one is for retail day to day transaction by common people one is for banking money creation one is for international trading etc etc so if you read my paper it will be available to you so uh, also uh, so far as blockchain is concerned and governance of blockchain is concerned uh, governance is essentially ensured by the machine protocol and of course the super smart contract uh, any question on the governance part before i move to my second volume of presentation any question on governance part uh dr roy can i move to my second presentation yes sir yes sir okay uh this is my second presentation and uh students you must be knowing that for the first time uh in my life i have spoken in very many forum international also many times i have spoken in overseas countries uh physically also and virtually also but i have never had the chance to speak in economic times so this time i had to i i was invited to speak and deliver a keynote speech on economic times digital forum so uh, what i'll be talking to you is um, uh, something in this part of the uh, talking uh, uh, on something which uh, uh, I, i i is very close to my heart i have recently written a paper called uh, uh, human and ethical dimensions of digital transformation so uh, many many things are happening all around the world and digital transformation is not without its scars uh, here i'll only talk about those aspects which are pertaining to blockchain technology because uh, when we talk about ai and rpa uh, we have to do a lot of things to ensure that digital technology does good to humanity on the blockchain technology is not a disruptive technology it's a foundational technology and it's a foundational innovation it has the prospects to create new foundations for both our economy and societal structure uh, this has been a, a research publication report from harvard school of business that that's what i was talking at the very beginning of my presentation that it's a, it's it's going uh, it is neither uh, a technology which is high impacting technology uh, it is uh, it is it is not neither a transformational technology it is going to be a technology uh, it is going to be a technology which is uh, uh, which is going to be a foundational technology which will change the economic and social structure of a country Uh, this is a 2017 publication of gartner and gartner is the most respected organization in the world of uh, in the world of uh, technology gartner says that 
by 2025 blockchain will help saving 176 176 billion dollars saving that is the value addition to business and by 2030 it will help saving 3.1 trillion dollars 3.1 trillion dollars saving in cost that is value addition by 2030 and again uh, uh, davos uh, world economic forum a pwc report says stated that by 2027 10% of the world gdp global gdp will be transacted through blockchain that means worth of 10% of global gdp will be in blockchain so blockchain if if by 2030 world gdp is estimated to be 110 trillion dollar if 10% of 110 trillion dollar is that is the world gdp then about 11 trillion dollar 11 trillion dollar will be the value blockchain will be hosting think of mind boggling number one technology one 11 trillion dollar worldwide what is happening in the world investment in 2019 only venture capitalists all over the world have invested 3.08 billion dollar in blockchain see here 2017 the investment was 1 billion dollar and 2018 19 the investment was 3.9 billion dollar 290% increase it is said that blockchain is a slow starter blockchain is a slow starter but it is gradually gradually picking up now i am giving you some statistics statistics is the world's most respected statistical organization this has been based on total number of executives all over the world studied under 1448 these people has given that the applications of blockchain technology digital currency 30% data access 32% data reconciliation 31% identity protection 31% track and trace 27% certification 23% access to ip 21% intellectual property so these are the and the answer is not adding to 100 because each participant may be using in more than <clears throat> three four items and the participants are from brazil canada china germany hong kong ireland israel mexico singapore south africa switzerland united emirates united states also So think of what is happening in the world. One side investment is increasing, the other side applications are increasing day by day. Uh, again, uh, uh, n is equal to one forty one thousand four hundred forty eight. This is of course the two thousand nineteen data. Twelve percent of this one point four four eight says that our spending would be ten million dollar by twenty twenty. 24% said that 5 million dollar and 30% have said that we will be spending 1 million dollar on blockchain technology that means and again the same kind of countries because the survey was the same so what is happening in the world is that blockchain is gradually putting picking up momentum in the world blockchain is gradually picking up momentum in the world in terms of applications Uh, in the world something more is happening uh, i'll give you this one first because recently i have been made uh, honorary member of the government blockchain at virginia usa this organization is helping governments all over the world for implementation of blockchain technology uh, in government organization Uh, i have spoken to uh, organization like microsoft ibm etc these organizations are developing smart contract libraries libraries because this is one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, hindrances of implementing blockchain that is smart contract this is a russian organization called idscb i have met them met these people when i was in russia 
they are trying to adopt the best practices of various countries of the world and trying to bring out a world standard of codes in Russia and to be implemented all over the world. If multilateral agencies like IMF, etc., accept those. So uh, something happening in the world where uh, some world level standards are being uh, are coming and world level initiatives are coming. This is a very interesting paper from IMF. Uh, uh, I, and uh, since 2018, I was talking about uh, some multilateral agency coming up with the uh, world codes for uh, cryptocurrency, etc. Very recently, uh, IMF has come up with a paper uh, on, on various guidelines, etc. for digital currency. I don't want to discuss this. If you are interested to uh, know, you can talk about this, uh, read about this. This particular paper is trying to address various controversial and conceptual issues where there can be dissimilarities amongst various sovereign countries of the world in terms of financial integrity, privacy, in terms of uh, monetary system efficiency and monetary policy formulation and, uh, and, and inclusive growth so that cost becomes lower and uh, shared benefit because uh, it, is being, it is being doubted. There is an Oxford University research paper available. I have read that paper where it has been said that technology will be developed by all over the world, particularly with contributions from people who, uh, who st stay in non-European and non-US countries. They will be the technology brains, but the benefits resulted, financial benefits resulted from technology will be used by people who are above the equator. That means North Hemisphere of the, of the world will be benefited. So IMF is trying to uh, address that issue. Of course, that comment of uh, uh, Oxford University research is mainly because of uh, artificial intelligence and robotic process automation. But I believe in blockchain also, that could be an issue. Now let us ent enter into a very interesting area. Does your business need blockchain? Can anybody and everybody adopt blockchain? Will that help them? Let us get into that area. Uh, you can read this paper if you want. Uh, it is very interesting. E. Ernst & Young, a world level big four firm has said that there are just five questions, just five questions. If you can answer five, three of the five questions in positive, then your organization needs blockchain technology. What is that? First question is, are there multiple parties in the ecosystem? Any, and I talked about healthcare, Kishan Bikash platform, export import business, trade finance, all multiple parties. Is establishing trust between all parties is an issue? Yes, in business trust is always an issue. Is it critical to have a detailed transactional record of activity? Yes, world is gradually moving towards litigation. And, and in any case, any country's companies act suggest that financial records are to be kept for minimum nine years from the point of view of any litigation, tax, tax management, et cetera, et cetera. Are you securing ownership or management of finite source? Core logic in the blockchain system is designed to prevent double counting. That means there should be one version of truth, finite source. Like it is said that if news is added with views, it no longer remains a news. It becomes a distorted message because views are personal and news is actually what happened. When news are added with views, it becomes a fake news. So in transactions also, if transactions are double counted or erroneously recorded or doesn't happen in, 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 in compliance with the regulation, it becomes a, a distorted transaction. And finally, does the network of partners benefit from the increased transparency across the ecosystem? Yes, cost savings are done, time is saved, 
record keeping is done and it is it is transparent so if out of these five questions if three questions are answered positively then you need a blockchain so uh, here is a very interesting doc, uh, uh, graphics where uh, 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 these five questions have been embedded and uh, these five questions have been embedded in such a fashion whether you need a private blockchain or you need a public blockchain that has also been answered okay uh, i don't want to get into this uh, because i want to keep quite a lot of time for question and answer session uh, towards the end there is a niche this particular paper is little decade de <clears throat> old so it has said that do you require high performance rapid transaction millisecond solution blockchain can do this effectively yet solutions are in development or here is another question do you intend to store non transactional data as a part of your solution non transactional data like your blood report or your x ray report uh, do you want uh, do you want uh, need to rely on a trusted party compliance uh, compliance reasons answer is yes so here is the definite position do you want need to rely on a trusted party that is for compliance reasons if your answer is no then you, you do you need the ability to control the functionality that is this question and this question is interrelated do you want to need the ability to to control the functionality if you don't need to control the functionality then you can go for a public blockchain this is the question pradeep dev was asking and if you need to control the functionality and some other student was also asking then if you want to control it then you can go to private blockchain so your decision regarding private blockchain and public blockchain also can be talked about and here are those five questions embedded which i just saw, uh, showed you regarding uh, invoice questions so so this is how you take a decision uh, here again a mckinsey point and and i'm sure dr roy has already discussed with you there are certain myth about blockchain and mckinsey has noted about the reality against that myth blockchain is bitcoin that's what i've said blockchain is not bitcoin blockchain is a better than traditional databases blockchain's advantage come from significant technical trade offs that means traditional uh, database often still perform better here is a very interesting point uh mckinsey is trying to say that traditional databases functions better but let me tell you after this mckinsey report was published i have given you the source here a lot of work has gone into blockchain and perhaps this problem is solved blockchain is immutable or tamper proof blockchain data structure is open happen only so data can't be removed i show you, showed you a, a cartoon a blockchain data cannot be removed blockchain 100% secure blockchain uses immutable data structure such as protected cryptography so so uh, the myth and reality this is the sentence which is a myth or a common said people sentence and this is blockchain what exactly does blockchain is a truth machine blockchain can verify all transaction and data entirely contained on and native to blockchain yes if the blockchain can verify the all data which is there in, inside the blockchain then it's a truth machine no doubt about it uh this is a capgemini study of 2018 447 people participated in this study it's a very very interesting study if you read this paper i've given the source here i've given the source here uh, uh it says that 
between 2011 to 18, people started knowing that there is a something called blockchain. In fact, I have read, I have already written about the history of blockchain. Somewhere in 1977, the first idea of blockchain came. It's not Satoshi Nakamoto, which has developed blockchain. Before that, blockchain has come in crude form. 2017 to 20, experimentation were done. And now blockchain is into implementation and transformation mode. Now, why people are implementing it? Out of 447 people, 89% cost saving, 81% is traceability, 79% transparency, 57% revenue generation, 50% risk reduction, 44% is creating new business, and 38% is customer centric because customers want blockchain. It is not adding up to 100 because one party is using for more than one purpose. So these are the drivers, traceability, cost saving, transparency, revenue generation, creating new business, risk reduction. These are the drivers of blockchain technology. This is a, a PwC publication. It's, uh, students, you can gradually see what is happening. Uh, this was a 2018 May study. Uh, this is a larger population study of 600 PwC study. PwC has said that 84% of respondents are directly involved with blockchain. 45% believe that trust could delay adoption. Means people do not know as yet what is blockchain. So they are still skeptical. 30% say that China is rising in blockchain and 28% say that interoperability of system is an issue. And according to them, 46% is the, uh, is, the, uh, is the number of organization they are using for financial services, 12% for manufacturing, 12% for energy, et cetera, et cetera. So, and uh, they said that in 2018, US was controlling 29% of all blockchain applications. And by 20, uh, uh, 2023, most probably, yeah, 2023, only 18% will be controlled by US. And what is controlled by China, by 2023, China will overtake US and go to 30% of blockchain technology. So you can imagine that US will fall behind China according to PwC's uh, uh, prediction. This is another very, very interesting uh, uh, analysis of blockchain technology. So this is the study of 2020, 2019, and 2018. In 2020, 1488 was the population, 1386 is in 2019, and 1053 was 2000. 18. Now, 55% of 1448 people said blockchain is critical for their strategy. It will be critical and in our top five strategy. That means CEO's top five agenda, one of them is blockchain. 27% says it is important, but not top five. So if you add these two together, 82% says that it is important technology. It is important for us, out of which 55% is top five. 14% says that blockchain technology is relevant for me, but it is not a priority for us at the moment. So 82 plus 14, 96%. For 96% of 1448 people, blockchain has been considered to be relevant. 55% top of the uh, agenda, 27% important but not priority, and 14% relevant. So 90, 96% relevant. Only 3% said that they have not reached the conclusion, and 3% said that this is not yet relevant. So only 3% says that not relevant. So uh, uh, it is adding up to 102%, but because of decimal places. So students, you can imagine 
what is the position now respondents attitude to blockchain how does it how does it uh, uh, look at how do we look at it uh, scalability 88% and one thing i i forgot to tell you between 2018 and 2020 numbers have jumped from 43 to 55 and 20 and uh, 29 to 26 here it is increase in a year of course it has to decrease so scalability 88% say it is scalable it can be done business case 86% says uh, uh, blockchain technology and their organizational project has a business uh, compelling business case compelling business case and 74% to 86% compelling business case our suppliers customers and our competitors are discussing or working on blockchain solution so to current challenge in the value chain that saves my organization serves my organization so if their stakeholders are increase doing then 85% of the people said that we have to also replace our system with blockchain like six indian banks have gone into trade finance blockchain competitive advantage in 2018 68% says that competitive advantage is there if blockchain is adopted and now in 2020 83% people are saying that blockchain can give us competitive advantage uh is it blockchain overhyped 54% is saying that yes is it overhyped blockchain person 54% people are saying it is overhyped but even then 96% says it is relevant 82% saying it is important and 55% is saying it is my important and it is my critical strategic agenda into same statistic same organization uh 2019 when 23% were uh, already uh, brought blockchain into production that 23% has gone to 39% that means blockchain is already producing it is in operations so for is uh, revenue orientation organization 41% of the organization has got us dollar 100 million turnover and 46% of the organization is more than us dollar 1 billion turnover so you can think of one thing between this slide and over this slide to this slide to this slide to this slide as the period comes up you are finding that blockchain is gradually getting into the indoors of business and becoming a very very important technology for digital transformation uh, this is another this is the deloitte paper it is same as i have discussed for the ernst and young paper to identify whether technology is important so the uh, blockchain is an important technology for you so two big force is giving you confidence to their research that blockchain is important uh how to build a blockchain ecosystem if you want to whether it is a friend or foe you can read this in this in this website just give me a minute sorry so now i'll come into a very interesting area uh if you want to uh if you want to talk about uh uh one thing which i i want to take you to indian mythology and robert albert einstein that when you are a solution designer you must think of couple of things we are born into the world of nature and our second birth is into the world of spirit but who, who with strong body serving mind gives up his power to work the work that means blockchain needs strength of body 
blockchain needs strength of imagination and power of mind that is what our gita says that if you want to serve your mind by strength you cannot you can't do what the work by strength you need power of imagination it is power of mind and spirit that will determine the success of industry 4.0 that is digital era the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge but it is imagination honestly speaking i am not done much of work on the accounting and auditing era area of blockchain but i'm i'm trying to do some research on this but some work i have already done uh, and that is uh, uh, blockchain platforms particularly enterprise platforms are based on three foundation pillars one is the propagation all participants has access to transactional nature which are identical in the all ledgers three pillars which are identical and equivalent and again you you will be need to know basis you will come to know about it permanence no blockchain record can be cannot be changed these are pillars for accounting and reporting and programmability of course uh, you know these are the features of blockchain technology so these three features along with these three features of blockchain technology creates the foundation which can be the most believed most reliable data with one version of truth that is what accounting requires accounting requires reliable information and it is blockchain which can give you reliable information that is what i am trying to say through this slide blockchain believes in one single version of truth and is built on the foundation of trust single version of truth and foundation of trust what you trust is not necessarily true what is true is not necessarily what you trust what i am trying to say that there can be difference between truth and trust unknowingly we may trust something which is not true blockchain brings this difference between truth and trust to zero because blockchain believes in one version of truth which is absolutely required for accounting and reporting uh this is uh, this is another interesting slide that you are only successful as a businessman if your business insights are high and if your financial capability as a professional is also high if your business insight is high and capability is high you become a value aggregator your performance optimization predictive insight enterprise risk management and business decision making blockchain helps in all this four so right from the bookkeeper's role you just transcend yourself to the value aggregator's role that is what i have tried to speak here accountants must monitor transaction accountants expertise would be needed more than ever to analyze financial results so there is some saying that the blockchain technology become successful i as an accountant would become redundant but the problem here is your business inside will come to you only if you can understand your business what is happening in the physical marketplace and appreciating that through digital analysis of data both big data analysis ai and ml that is give you that will give you business insight and that is what blockchain technology can do a uh, pwc has uh, uh, has uh, opined that blockchain technology cannot be audited following the traditional for method if you want to audit blockchain technology then based transaction then you have to do all time on online real time because is blockchain is unique each blockchain technology has got def definitive validation models 
is blockchain technology is customized for certain transactions and they have got their smart contracts embedded into them so traditional technology will not or traditional auditing techniques will not work so blockchain environments are real time and do not include historical ledgers that allow for audit so pwc has developed a to auditing tool which they have embedded into the system for auditing blockchain based data and establishing their reliability so that when these data gets into your erp system for financial accounting and reporting the data is completed it does mean that from the blockchain technology when the data enters into your financial ledger the data transaction wise it is audited and it is not trust audited say out of 1 million transaction only 20% auditor can see auditor cannot definitely audit every transaction so when blockchain is there every transaction will be tested through that all time on all the uh, online real time audit tool and before the data gets into erp system the transaction is already audited so your risk management framework is kind of real time risk management framework and the information gained by employing the framework is used to configure validation software so if you do not allow any human intervention into your ledger which are populated by blockchain then you have lesser risk except the closing entries a certain adjustment entry which you have to do which you can always control as an accountant and a cfo so this is further elaboration of that uh ernst and young <clears throat> my this particular study of mine is slightly slightly old april 24 2018 they have found out auditing tools for cryptocurrency not for any other commercial transaction for block, through blockchain so it's slightly dated a kpmg has taken an approach of big data cognitive technology is the approach they have taken uh, they say that my auditing approach would be help me to do the right things and help me to do the right things and help me to do the things right so help me to do the things right and help me to do the right things that means i want to do the right things in the right way and for that they are getting in their reliance is more on to big data i do not know whether this approach would be very useful for blockchain technology i again accept that my study is a little uh, old i will come back to you on this with more, much more work through my next article this is blockchain and risk management i am almost uh, another four four five slides to bother you after that i'm sure i'll be able to keep 20 minutes for question and answer uh if you do risk management in terms of cyber security and in in terms of smart contract in terms of smart contract uh any 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 risk management effort by safety pin methodology will not work because safety pins may bridge the gap here first of all it will not bridge the complete gap moreover it can develop tiers from here so your whole risk management work will go away so blockchain never creates a crack and it doesn't use safety pin technology so it's absolutely risk free kind of blockchain is appropriately structured immutable cryptograph right to know basis every damn thing is so structured in blockchain technology that the string down or failing hardly there is any scope any organization would like to address while well, in digital transformation the weakest link of the chain and weakest link of the chain stays in those five questions which ui has designed you remember i talked to you or the myths which uh, mckinsey has closed so if you answer those five questions and take care of that 
most probably blockchain takes care of the weakest of the weak link of your system, which comes from mainly human intervention. Accountants today do apply discretionary power. In blockchain technology, accountants' consent will be there, will be required because no transaction can get into blockchain technology without a consent. But that consent will be governed by the smart contract and the framework of blockchain technology. And like any other IT system, blockchain is not, is not a peripheral manager. Even then in any other IT system, there are ports in the periphery. Blockchain protects even the core of the system. So risk management is a priority and not an afterthought. Practically nothing is safe in this world. Blockchain gives you that comfort that it is safe. And now on, I'm on my last leg of uh, my talk. Let me finish this. Then I'll take uh, the, uh, this is my last agenda item. Then I'll take your questions. Uh, I have recently written a paper on human and ethical dimensions of digital transformation. Uh, you, might, you might be knowing that in 1948, United Nations in their Paris conference declared the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All the countries of the world has adopted these human rights as declared by United Nations. I've read the entire document very recently on the last month I've read this document. I've identified these five articles uh, there are 30 articles. All are important. All can be breached by digital transformation other than blockchain. Particularly these five articles. Born, human beings are born free and equal in dignity. Everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security. None shall be, sub, shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with privacy, family, home or correspondence, not to attacks upon his honor and reputation. Article 28 says everyone is entitled to social and international order in which right and freedom can be realized. That means everybody should be able to <clears throat> exercise the right which is enshrined in the constitution of their respective countries. And there should be limitations only to the extent determined by the law other than the law there should not be no limitation. Everybody should have the right to be free. Due recognition and respect is right of freedom and requirement of morality, public order, and general welfare. Now, if you read my paper, if you read my paper, you will, you will find that in my paper, uh, which has recently been published, which is there in LinkedIn, I have discussed, I have taken the case of artificial intelligence and robotic process automation for testing whether these five rights can be frozen or can be broken and bridged. The answer is yes, these five rights can be bridged. And very often there are instances of breaches also. So digital transformation does not necessarily mean that human rights will not be breached. Now, a very interesting, another statement OECD has said that being able to measure people's quality of life is a fundamental when assessing progress of societies. Quality of life, that means any digital transformation you do should improve the quality of life of people. Artificial intelligence is one tool which has allowed marketing managers to breach or disturb the quality of life of people. It has done many, many good things, but it is doing some bad things also. That is why I have written that new paper called Internet of Behavior. So blockchain technology perhaps the only technology which can score near 99% of this. Next is very important paper. This is what I spoke in Mo Moscow and became very popular there in the conference. 
technology does not have morality, emotion, ethics, and value generation skill. Technology doesn't have morality, ethics, emotion, and value generation skill. The technology is habit. Success of digital transformation will depend on those human qualities of solution builders, leaving least scope for anyone to use with any ulterior motive. That means when you go in your corporate life, you only will have ethics, emotion, and morality. Technology will not have. So when you design solution, you design solution in such a manner that None can use it, breaking the morality, emotion, and ethics. Sustainable, so the technology should be designed in such a manner that whatever value is generated are shared with people. I have already spoken about global regulatory body. Uh, I, uh, 2018, I sp first spoke about central bank digital currency in a Delhi conference. There itself, I said, Central bank digital currency must come and will come. Now, go, uh, recently, an American senator, I have, I have put it in LinkedIn and Twitter also, you can see a lady with a red jacket, uh, an American senator, I forgot her name, saying that cryptocurrency must be controlled with, by a regulatory body. Regulator must have more insight to control through oversight. Regulator should not be regulator. They should have insight for controlling what they are controlling. Customers must have option for self-initiated executable contract, that is smart contract. And industry 5.0 is coming where the technology will be a kitchen type technology. Someday, if uh, Dr. Rai permits, I'll tell, talk to you about what is kitchen type technology. What is equivalent to technology like a kitchen? That, that I will tell you. So this is what I introduced in Moscow. Uh, I said that success of blockchain will depend on those human quality of solution builders, that is morality, emotion, and ethics, leaving least possible scope for all others to deploy the blockchain as a technology for ulterior motive. And I have introduced a principle called seven Ps and seven Ps of digital transformation with blockchain. Seven T's are technology, talent, truth, trust, transparency, tenacity, and timeline. I repeat technology, talent, truth, trust, transparency, tenacity, and timeline. And seven P's, people, patience, passion, perseverance, piety, purity, and penance. You can read about this more in one of my papers here. People, patience, passion, perseverance, piety, purity, and penance. Blockchain will attain darling of the mass status. And this word caught fire in US, in America. Uh, sorry, may, I made a mistake in Russia where I, I delivered this. And also in America, it became some authors wrote me back why you have used this language. It's so nice to see. Blockchain will attain building of the must status like internet if it is adopted and applied with the mindset of universal altruism. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, that is the Indian philosophy. It should be grounded on the human foundation of sustainable shared values. Whatever value you create, that means if trade because of trade finance blockchain. Banks reduce the cost by say 10 percent. I'm just putting a number. Five percent of this should be shared with people. That is to with the bank, and banks in turn must share with with uh, in companies. And if the company saves money, it's, it must share with its employees and P and and general stakeholders. So it should be a value chain of money saved being shared with the common mass. Now, next sentence is also very important. Block, blockchain technologies cannot be become just another technology tribe. Don't call yourself just techie. I'm a blockchain technologist. Don't raise your collar for that. But should be the harbingers of development shared with mass for inclusive happiness. Blockchain technology should be the harbingers of inclusive happiness.
WWW has transcended geographical boundaries. Blockchain will have to transcend the sovereign political boundaries. That's what I'm saying, that sitting in India, you do two blockchain transactions where the smart contract will talk about and will take care of the global laws. Blockchain should have its own ism, irrespective of globalization and protectionism. That means blockchain should have its own ethics. Blockchain must rewrite the inclusive character of Industry 4.0. No other technology can rewrite the inclusive character. That means shared happiness, shared smile, shared prosperity, shared growth. Industry 4.0, if it has to be successful, it has to be for inclusive happiness. Up to in, in Industry 3.0, we have seen HNIs. We have seen industrialists never be, become sick. Industries can become sick. Blockchain technology can do lots of that for doing shared happiness. Customers must have options for self-initiated executable contracts. I talked about it. Humanity is one and the world is its home. And the need of a global regulatory body for directions monitoring. As you know, civil aviation standards, 193 countries use it without change of comma and full stop because civil aviation deals with people's life. Blockchain is dealing with people's money or for that matter, any digital technology is de de dealing with people's money. Why should not there be a world level code of conduct? Okay, next is the blockchain of things. I don't want to talk because I've talked about it when I have designed the healthcare services, uh, very soon uh, it is said that it very very soon will be uh, uh, will be under the influence of lot of lot of IOTs and IOTs can do wonders and IOT can do disasters also, including robotic process automation if that is not controlled. So I have suggested about omni-channel delivery and interoperability of blockchain with use of IOTs. Industry 5.0 is not my topic, so I'll not talk about it. You can read it later. This is my uh, last, uh, last slide. The 10 commandments for digital transformation. This is my own creation after my research. So what are the 10 commandments you as a digital trans scientist or digital solution designer or a startup you should remember? Humanity first, redistribute power, reduce complexities, reimagine consumption, go for creative destruction. That means you destroy the old only to create new things. Manage climate emergency, which blockchain is doing. Great Barrier Reef of Australia is being managed by heat, heating of Great Barrier Reef is being managed by blockchain technology. Manage climate emergency. Be accountable without discrimination. Be accountable to the last man of the society, not only HNIs. Fix imbalance of humanity and technology. Today, humanity and technology are not on the same balance. There are huge differences. I talked about the Oxford publication and research work on this. Enhance technology with universal altruism. Let imagination, safety, and, and ethics lead transformation. Let imagination, safety, and ethics lead transformation. These are my 10 commandments for digital transformation. So I believe in ant philosophy, an ant can carry 20 times of its own weight. So you can also carry that. Don't challenge your limits, limit your challenges. Your challenge is to limit your challenges. Don't challenge your limits. You have an infinite capability to do things. So Gurudev Ravindranath said, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. And I acted and behold that service was joy. So service should be your motto. If you are a digital technology designer, if you are a blockchain 
evangelist, your joy should be service. I take a lot of joy by sharing whatever I know on blockchain. That's what I'm doing with you in this Sunday evening. So my hero, I quote him when I just end this presentation, a vision is not a project report or a plan target. It is an articulation of a desired end result in broader terms. I read it again. A vision is not a project report or a plan target. It is an articulation of a desired end result in broader terms. Students, thank you so much for giving me so much of patient hearing on a Sunday evening. So I request you to open your videos now and let us chat. Let us have your questions. I hope Dr. Roy, I could meet your expectation. Sir, I have been enamored by your visionary, you know, aspects of thought in, in the blockchain area and otherwise. So I'm sure the students have also, you know, kind of got a feel of, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the levels at which you operate. Okay, in the context of these kind of, you know, observations that you have made, the deductions that you have come across, okay, and the, and, and, and the, the last thing, sir, I mean, I have to thank you for that. You know, uh, your, you know, propensity towards sharing your ideas and, you know, taking everyone together and that this uh, Sunday evening, okay, I mean, the, the energy with which you had begun and the same level at which you have ended. Okay, I sincerely appreciate. No, 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 no. Let me, let, us, let me have a lot of questions from students. Let all the videos be open. Whosoever is present, 72 students are present. Uh, 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 why, don't you, uh, why don't you open your video and ask me, Paritosh sir, your dedication and passion, somebody has written in a chat. Let me read it, what he has written. Paritosh, sir, your dedication and passion for this subject is remarkable. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. I would be happy if you keep reading my papers and learn more. Thank you so much uh, for Joheb. Any other question from anybody? Sir, not a question, but we definitely follow you on LinkedIn and read all your articles. Like <laughs> It has been our routine from the past 10 to 15 days since we have connected. Thank so it's you. really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. My personal request to you that uh, light a lamp to illuminate the world. Uh, even I, I request you to write. If you cannot write a light by which you have been benefited, if you feel that you have been benefited, then share that light. That means whatever you read and whatever you feel, even if you have half read it, if you feel that it has got something which can illuminate some other mind, why don't you share it? That's the best way. If you go to Twitter, I keep sharing lots of good writers. So uh, if, you, if you are not a lamp by yourself, you can at least be a reflector. If you are not a lamp by yourself, you can at least be a reflector and you can be a reflector by sharing that. Okay, any other question? Sir, one thing which bothers me is the, you know, uh, the, the extent of data that is required in the context of blockchain. I mean, there is no archival facility. Okay, everybody has to store everything, all the participants, the full nodes. Okay, so uh, I mean, Umna, that's a very interesting question. And I raise this question to, uh, you know, uh, two things are happening. If you, uh, I was interacting with a professor of MPSTM, our own engineering school of NMIMS. There, there is a PhD scholar who is working on uh, in interoperability of blockchain. And I shared with him the dragon chain. Uh, uh, whatever is there, because this is a patented document, they will not share it with us. The point to you, which you are mentioning, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of work is going on in the world, that the wallet concept is coming. What is that wallet concept? Suppose I'm in a healthcare and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a consulting surgeon 
so in my wallet what is happening with insurance company and the and the patient need not come yet at the same time if as a consulting surgeon if that patient comes to me in the second time or if the patient says that because of the surgeon's wrong writing a prescription or report insurance company is not giving in that case whether additional things which is not in my wallet design with that can be pushed on on a need to know basis again because of a subsequent on a normal transaction it would have not been required but on a need to know basis because of a subsequent query raised by the insurance company it is not required so digit right you are my guru you you taught me couple of things uh, somdat script writing or uh, blockchain you taught me how to do you remember i once asked you a transaction about an insurance company script writing so that thought pushed me further to think through that it is being it is being possible to create wallets without 200% of all transaction need not be in all wallets it can be designed in such a manner that it is confining with the or it is on the foundation of blockchain technology that is all nodes have got all information but all nodes need not store all information that can be assured through a wallet management system i believe people are working on it yeah yeah that light node concept of light node has to be you know kind of uh, accentuated with the role aspect so it is a it is a it is a, the lightness aspect and the role aspect which will de determine how much of actual data will you store for yourself that is called green blockchain because if you store that much of data that much digital space also you require uh -huh. which is kind of unnecessary correct 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 sir thank you sir any other question from anybody charulata gautam i am seeing you i don't know students generally do not open their videos i do not know why uh, because we as teachers we feel proud to see the faces of our student and your face your eyeball connection your smile or your anxiety that i am not understanding it that helps us to teach more explain more make it more lucid make it more easily understandable to you and it's not an easy subject uh, so can i ask one question like i just have one question which may sound general but what are your views about the future of cryptocurrency because blockchain as a technology we understood it is greatly valuable and bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are based on that so how do you see the future because coming from a chartered accountancy background i strongly believe in fundamentals and i don't see such strong fundamentals as the value of the cryptocurrency right very now. good question jayesh i have already answered it in my paper and the paper is titled emergence of central bank digital currency from the phoenix of cryptocurrency according to my prophecy you remember as a student i am making a prophecy today which i made 2018 delhi cryptocurrency will ultimately prove to be an asset class like mutual fund in future their ethereum can come their bitcoin can come their uh, any other coin can come stable coin also come it will it will not become a medium of transaction settlement as it is also not today or to a certain extent yes bitcoin even in accepted in some of the cafes of usa today bitcoin to a very very limited extent is performing as a medium of exchange but in course of time when cbdc will come central bank digital currency will come across all countries for which a lot of work is being done in all corners of the world cbdc will become the digital currency for not only intra country settlement of debts of trade trade dues but also cross national and trans border settlement of dues so cbdc will take over either by digital token method or digital currency method 
and taxonomy says it has to be tokenized. It will become the future of currency and, and it will operate and CBDC, all countries will operate in their own blockchain platform, CBDC as the cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency of private parties will become an asset class only. It will not become a general medium of transaction settlement. That is my prophecy. And that to happen in countries where it is allowed to happen. As you know, ICICI Bank only day before yesterday has stopped allowing LRS scheme that is liberalized remittance scheme of $250,000 for buying cryptocurrency outside India. So my prophecy, five years down the line, and cryptocurrency will come as a medium of settlement. London, UK is issuing a cryptocurrency for its commoners to use. Single citizen will use a cryptocurrency. London has already done, uh, my research paper says, it has already done testing of that. Like we have four kinds of money, which I have explained in paper. Reserve bank money, banking sector money, customer to customer money, and fiat currency money. There will be four current kinds of CBDC in terms of operations. And fiat currency will go away. Interbank quotations will be there for even cryptocurrency loan. And inter-country like today, foreign currency exchange rates are fixed. Similarly, CBDC of India and CBDC of US will be fixed. Two countries have already issued CBDC. They are working. And, uh, and China has already done CBDC testing in four cities of China and withdrawn. Let me tell you one thing, why China has recently created suddenly giving so much of impetus and boosting to cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and 50 to 60% of the miners of Bitcoin being in China, why they are now not patronizing Bitcoin? A very simple, I have written in one of my tweets very, very clearly and nakedly, one of the objective of China not supporting Bitcoin anymore is to propagate their own cryptocurrency which is Chinese CBDC, digital yuan. Digital renminbi. Sir, how does that take care of the fundamentals aspect which Jayesh referred to? I mean, your prophecy, hmm. I mean, it will become an asset class, but where is the fundamental aspect? I mean, you know, that, that fundamental necessity. So let me tell you, what is happening to Bitcoin today? Why Bitcoin is, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin, Bitcoin recently came down by 43% because of one guy, that is Elon Musk. Elon Musk said that Tesla cars will be sold again Bitcoin. And he himself cornered a sizable percent of Bitcoin in US. Suddenly he started selling and he, start, he, he, he started doing uh, saying that, no, no, Tesla will not accept. What happened? Bit Bitcoin has lost almost 43 to 44% of its value. It does mean because Bitcoin cannot be issued more than 21 or 23 million, it has become an, a, a financial asset of esteem value or dogmatic position. I am suffering from an ego that I want, I hold a digital. In US, those who have digital currency or Bitcoin, their, their lapel pins on the, on the coat collar is a Bitcoin sign. It does indicate that I am, US, you know, that if your tie crosses your belt, it indicates that you are open for marriage or open for living together or open for friendship. Right now, don't, don't mind, girls don't mind with this statement. This is the rule of, of Western world. Similarly, if there is a, if there is a, if it is a Bitcoin investor, his lapel pin is a Bitcoin. 
Yeah, I have met Satoshi Nakamoto's one team member, Joe Malt, in an Hyderabad conference. He uses that Bitcoin lapel pin in his, in his code. The point I'm making, it has become an asset which has already created its value because of non-availability. I don't think this will vanish away from the world. It will continue like this and certain countries will allow Bitcoin as a parallel media of settlement. In that situation, maybe Bitcoin, Ethereum or one or two coins finally stay. You know, and you also know that Facebook, Mr. Zuckerberg has understood that cryptocurrency doesn't have a future and Libra has not come out as yet. Because from Libra, both the Visa and, uh, and what is the other card, Visa and? They withdrew. Uh, both the card people have gone away and the card future is almost gone. In India, card transactions have come down because of digital payment. So, 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 uh, according to me, that fancy of digital currency will stay there for some time. Sir, I'll, uh, I, I'll mention a few points for your consideration. Yeah. See, that anonymity which Bitcoin offers may not be there with CBDC. Okay. So, one reason why Bitcoin, I mean, if I have to look at it very simplistically, Okay, the demand for Bitcoin is actually equivalent to the anonymity aspect. Okay, if you take away the anonymity, Bitcoin may not be that much valuable. I mean, this asset class thing, dog coin, other altcoins, uh, it is there, but you know, the crux is anonymity. That's what my understanding is, which will not be there in the case of CBDC, number one. Number two is, today, Bitcoin has gone out of common man's hands. The only reason is the mining effort. Okay, if we can ensure, see in a, in a permissionless environment, we need proof of work. So if we can get some kind of proof of work, there are multiple ideas doing the rounds. Okay, if we can get some proof of work, which is equivalent to the benefit provided by the Bitcoin proof of work without the environmental, you know, the, the, the aspects of Bitcoin. Okay, it may be a very interesting thing to you know look at in terms of the future. Me, Dr. Roy, you are absolutely correct in this point. Uh, anonymity gave brought the dogma. But what you have commented about CBDC, the anonymity not remain. What is your savings bank balance? Do I know? No. Do I know your fixed deposit balance? No, no. no. That part is fine. I mean intra intra this way i mean you know it is anonymous fine but you know if you if you think in terms of the overall aspects of you know who knows me and how it is okay that concept of let me tell you one thing the debate which even world bank has also if you read the imf paper the world bank also said that you can use cbdc as a currency for dealing through digital platforms you do not bring all the characteristics elements of cryptocurrency in a CBDC. That is one school of thought going on. The other school of thought going on, because at some point of time, if economic demands, then additional coins will be issued. Today in, in Bitcoin, additional coins cannot be issued. But in an economic environment, this cannot be said that because government prints physical rupee, that is introduction of new coins, right? In, in taxonomy of digital coin, that is the new coin. So if taxonomy permits that you can use, issue more digital coins, then the, one of the finest attribute of the, the cryptocurrency is gone. So now there will be four kinds of CBDCs in any country. Now, which CBDC will have which uh, taxonom, which attributes Characteristics, is, that will emerge in the world as it, it is still in infant stage? Sir, uh, thank you very much. I mean, you know, uh, for this enlightening session, okay, I, I'm sure all of us really enjoyed this interaction with you and understanding the 
the, the the future in terms of your vision of blockchain okay so uh, i think we wholeheartedly thank you for being really? with us and uh, you know helping us out in our journey you know hand holding us in our journey towards understanding blockchain uh, shomnath i have a question you remember yes. the first joint session on blockchain for kpm sol we delivered jointly you remember 2000 you have heard me that day and you have seen today's presentation of mine do you think qualitatively there is any change sir i mean the, the the basic aspects of your understanding has remained but it has expanded a lot in terms of the the possibilities that you are exploring now okay you're looking at much deeper aspects of uh, the blockchain application Uh, which earlier was not quite clear in the ecosystem itself so you know i think you have kept up with the your research has kept up with the times thank you how people have expanded thank so you so much thing. and students must be uh, must be uh, very itching to close the class thank you so much for staying with me and i am happy that i got this opportunity to talk and sharing my thoughts i my personal last request if you cannot be the candle at least be the mirror so whatever not even only my writing if anybody is writing you like you feel that others will be benefited please be the mirror share it because you have the benefit to be a mirror in the social media today thank you very much indeed and namaskar thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir lovely thank weekend you, whatever is left for you thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir